Hello there, welcome to electrictv.net. Thanks for the click on this bang for your buck story. Newspapers across the country are experiencing trying times at the moment, but one paper company in one famous city is thriving, the New York Times Company. So much so that they recently built a new building to their exact specifications with the expertise of the NECA IBEW team. Dominic Gerritano has our story. Over the last 25 years, Times Square has gone through a rebirth, which included the purchase and renovation of eight skyscrapers. The first seven can be seen at various locations around this busy intersection. The eighth is about a block away. So the end, the last stop, the grand finale as it were, begins here at the New York Times new headquarters, known as the Southwest Anchor of the Times Square Revitalization Project. The NECA IBEW team played a large role in the construction of their new total light management system. The only way to see it is to go inside. Glenn, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Dominic. I'm Glenn doing Hughes, great. New York Times client contact or tour guide for the day. Uh, tell me a little bit about the job to start off with. Okay. Well, um, the building is 1.6 million square feet, so it's a rather large skyscraper. And the New York Times uh, hired Renzo Piano Building Workshop as our signature architect. And we're here to see the job that the Nika IBW team did with the light management system. Let's go check it out. Okay. Okay. The skill set between union and non-union is there's, in, in, in our minds and the company turning construction, there's, there's, never, there's not a discussion. They are by far better trained, they have uh, responsibility for safety, and they have a, a concern for a quality product. And that's one of the greatest reasons why we use union contractors in New York. So we went from the ground floor to the top floor, and I gotta tell you, this is a pretty amazing view up here. I don't know how you talked me into coming up here. <laughs> It's a little scary, but what, what, are we, what are we looking at up here? Well, I wanted to bring you up here because one of the most exciting parts of the electrical installation is really related to our mast. Okay. And on the bird nest up there on the mast, way up there, are two uh, different types of sensors, and we have radiometers that measure the power of the sun, and we have global illuminance sensors that are measuring the brightness of the sky. We wouldn't be able to run the system with the knowledge of what the sky conditions are, and that's what's so important, because we're trying to maximize natural light admittance in the space. Gotcha, let's get out of here, I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> the devil is in the details, especially on a project of this size, and, and this critical. Uh, because of the relationship between the Times and Turner and us, this job, came to uh, a very successful ending for all of us, that we finished on time and, from what I understand, on budget. Glenn, back on solid ground now. Very That's good. That's a good thing. I think I'd really like to start with just saying that total light management is the single greatest opportunity for energy savings in new or retrofit buildings. We're actually able to operate in this building at an average of 0.35 watts per square foot. Now, what is the code in New York? Is there a certain 1. benchmark? 1.1 1. So you're watts. supposed to be at 1.1. 1. 1. And we're at 0.35. Wow. So we're 70% below the standard. Now, you can do that voluntarily today, and that's what we've done in this building. Let's check it out. OK. Uh, this is the head-end equipment for the Lutron system. Uh, Lutron is the manufacturer of the ballast inside the lighting fixtures. Uh, it's all digitally controlled. Uh, every ballast in the building is a smart ballast. They each have an individual address, like an IP address. And the craftsmanship and all the determinations here is 100%. Uh, is and that's, uh, that's what makes me proud to be an IBW member. The electrical contractors turned out to be the first contractors in the ceiling. And that's because we didn't do the floor first. We did the ceilings first, and that was that was part of the underfloor air distribution sure. construction sequence that we really cooked up. And it made great sense for the project, and it really was great for the contractors. This was an unusual job because in the ceiling, the only thing there was the electrical and the uh, sprinkler system. So the ceilings were put up right away, and the fixtures went in, and the permanent lighting was done you know, before any of the floor work was done. Let's see the system in action. Talk to me about the settings. These are currently at, why they're there, why the shades where they are where they are, and, and how it's working. Okay. We are in a daylighting mode right now, and we're taking advantage of the natural light as much as we can, and you can see that two rows of electrical lights are out. 
because we don't even need electric light near the eastern perimeter. And we have two rows of light that are dimmed way down, but we need a little bit. We're, our target set point is 30 foot candles. So we're taking advantage of the natural light to the maximum amount possible. We're saving about a dollar per square foot. If you had a 25,000 foot uh, footprint, you'd be saving $25,000 a year for that floor. So I would think on the opposite side of the building that's not on the sun side, we'd have a completely different set of settings. That's correct. The shades should be up and there'll still be as little electric light as necessary, but the shades are going to be up on the west side because there's no direct solar penetration right now. Let's go see if that's the case. Your prediction would be correct there, Glenn. The shades are up, the lights are different, and we're on the west side of the building. Yes, and I think part of what is worth taking a look at is that the lights are still dimming down. We still have lots of lights out. So we take advantage of the natural light no matter where we are in the building all the time. So no one can say, I want to be on the east side, I want to be on the west side. You're right. Either part of the day works. That's correct. Okay, let's move. Okay. We're always there to uh, get the job done satisfactory for the company, our company, and for uh, Local 3, of course, who we represent as much as our company, and for the client. The client's the end result. The client expects to be done at a certain date, and we meet that goal. I think what makes this space so special is the double high curtain wall. There's so much more glass, which allows so much more natural light into the space that it really turns it into a great place to eat. It's really open here. You can really feel the sunlight coming in. What has the response been? The people have had such a positive response here in the New York Times building. And it's not only here in the cafeteria, but it's also in the office space. And it's all about the light. I love coming to work. It's, uh, you know, I, I sit here very close to the windows, so I get to see the views of the city. We have the Empire State Building, you know, right out the, the window here. Um, you, you really feel like you're right in the middle of things. In the morning, actually, when, um, when the, the sun is coming around the building, you'll start to get a lot of natural light in the space, and you'll start to think, you know, it's starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. There's a little bit of a glare, and right at that moment, the shades drop down, the lights brighten just a little bit. It's, it's almost like it's reading your thoughts at times. For Glenn Hughes of the New York Times, I'm Dominic Giratano for electrictv.net. See you next time. Thanks, Dom. One of the many things to remember about this story is total light management systems are viable solutions for any space, whether it be new or a retrofit building. We identified a myriad of ways that the New York Times company is saving energy and perhaps more importantly money with their system. But today's story was only part one of our two-part story from New York. We'll be back with another edition very soon, showing you exactly how the system works and just how much they're saving. So be sure to sign up for our ETV newsletters by clicking Get ETV Updates right above me. That way we alert you when part two is live. Thanks for the click. See you soon.